Hey, this is Joy. Welcome back to Inktoberfest. Are you having a blast? I know that I am. I am loving getting to know you guys on the premiere chats and look forward to working with you guys some more. Today I am using Gemma Neo paper. In fact, that's the only paper we're using today besides card bases. Um, what I like about this paper is it's two-sided. The shiny side is meant for your dye inks and ink blending. And then the back side, which is more of a matte, that's got the acrylic coating on it that you can do alcohol inking on. Now, Alex did say during the All About Ink Party that you can use alcohol inks on the glossy side as well. But um, I have not tried that. Maybe I should. All right. So here I am showing you just some ink swiping across the page. And I am using Muscle Car my boyfriend vega strip and blue moon now when i think of these colors i think of the ocean and typically that's where my mind always goes is to the beach but we are going to make christmas cards out of this um later on i love the texture that you get from the swiping and here i am showing that the ink does not go or you know doesn't go onto the back so it doesn't seep through that way, if you don't like what you did on one side, you can flip it over and you can start your um, alcohol inks. I am using a smaller piece of Gemma Neo paper, and I'm using the exact same inks, but I am using blending brushes. You can use any type of blending brush that you have. Um, I start out with the Blue Moon, and what you're going to see is you get a really soft, uh, buildable blend with this. And I do take my time. I kind of expected when I swiped my ink and blended that the ink would wipe right off because it's a, gla uh, a glossy paper. And I was pleasantly surprised. It does not move. And um, I think that's an awesome property of this paper. Because um, if you've used any other glossy paper, you know that a lot of times you can run your finger right over it and it wipes off. So I don't know what kind of voodoo um, Alex works when she sources her papers, but I think she is absolutely a genius. I am bringing in the muscle car, and I am blending that as well. Now you're going to notice that that pad, because it's brand new, is a little bit more juicy. And so I'm not working as hard um, to get to get down a more saturated blend. However, because I didn't realize that, you're gonna see that you can see the um, oval from my brush. Don't worry, it just keep blending. I always say that when we do cards. In fact, during this video, I left in some of my mistakes and how I fix them. Um, always on my channel, I try to tell people 99% of the time you can fix what you don't like about your project, either you put an embellishment on it or do something creative. So you're going to see that throughout this, this video. And I hope that you like that. If you don't, let me know. So I won't leave those in for now on. Now I'm bringing in the Vegas strip and I am blending that. Um, I do go back in and put at least two coats on each color because I think that gives you a more seamless blend. I do that with no matter what substrate I am using because that's just the way I was taught and it has never ever failed me. So please, like I said, put two layers down minimum and make sure that you overlap your color so you get a more uh, seamless blend, kind of an ombre going through them. Now you're going to see that I had contaminated my one like light blue brush so I used a baby wipe and I just scrubbed that off. I never clean my brushes. Maybe, I shouldn't say never. I maybe clean them, like take them to the sink and use soap and water on them maybe once or twice a year. The most I ever do is just clean them off with a baby wipe or I use a piece of scrap paper. And that is all you really need to do. Now, if you're going from a really dark color to a light color, absolutely make sure that you scrub that color off onto a scrap piece of paper. So are you seeing how nice this is starting to blend? And again, I dipped down into the wrong color with this brush. Just keep going because like I've told you, you've got your ombre colors and you're going to make this 
one beautiful blend at the end. Um, I so badly wanted to make this into a beach card or something spring-based. Um, I know that in the U.S. we are heading into fall. In fact, yesterday it went from 77 degrees here in the Cincinnati area to um, 40 today. And um, I'm not loving that, but I am going to embrace all of the weather changes and the the color changes in our leaves. Um, so I am absolutely sticking to fall colors for our fall cards on our list. And then I am making all of these beautiful blues into Christmas. Are you ready for Christmas? I mean, I've already started my shopping. Have you? I'm hoping that... Um, Maybe you'll consider buying yourself a Christmas present at Maker Forte. That was a little plug. Was that shameless? I think it, maybe it was. So anyhow, um, I always buy myself Christmas presents because um, at least there's one thing under the tree that I absolutely love. Now look at these blends. I am showing you what the ink swiping looks like versus the um, blending brushes. Now I am using alcohol inks on the back side or the acrylic coated side of the Gemma Neo paper. I am using the colors Raspberry and Aqua and these are the Tim Holtz um, alcohol inks. Now you're going to see that I am putting down the both colors and I did not speed any of this up so it might seem a little slow to you um, but one of the my favorite things to do when I first started card making was watch these blends. On screen, I had shown that I'm, I've got 91% alcohol in a squirt bottle. I also have alcohol blending solution from Ranger. Right now, I am blending with a camera dusting blower to move my inks, and that gives you a more concentrated blend. I am also using one of the mixatives, I believe it was silver, just to get a little bit of shine. Now, I like a lot of sparkle on my cards, so you're going to see that I bring in um, some foil here in a little bit. But right now, we're playing with the inks. I typically, when I do any type of alcohol ink cards, I like to create on a diagonal. I don't know why, that just is pleasing in my brain and into my eye. But of course, you blend yours however you want. I added that 91% alcohol with the sprayer and what 91% alcohol or 99% rubbing alcohol does, I would not go any lower than 91%. Is one, it gives you a more of a, for lack of better words, a watercolor effect and it kind of lightens the ink where blending solution keeps the vibrancy. I believe that uh, blending solution has a resin in it, which is what preserves the color. And you're I don't know if you can see at the right top corner from where I sprayed the alcohol. Once you have your color sound and if you miss that lightly, you'll see actual like cells or bubbles. It kind of reminds me of a paint pour technique. Um, so just play with your inks. There's nothing that you can do to screw up. It's paper, it's ink, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, you, like I said, you, you can't be mad at this process ever. In fact, it's um, one of my favorite things to do. Truth be known, I hate it when things explode all over my hands or I have my hands full of ink. I've actually been known to use, um, don't do this, um, Comet bleach spray on my hands because I can't stand it. But when it comes to alcohol inks, I will get inky. I don't care if it's on my arms, if it's on my face. I've been known to make an absolute crazy mess out of myself. Um, here I'm just drawing the card um, and we're moving on to the next one. This time I am putting the ink down without any type of solution or alcohol first. So you're gonna just see those dots really concentrated on my card base or my front panel. And you're gonna see I dropped some of the blue into the pink and that's because I wanted some purple. Now, naturally, you're gonna get a purple when you start moving the air around, but I wanted some concentrated purple. I am bringing in a hair tool. It's by Con Air. 
it's um, one of those like curling brushes that blows air. I don't know. I think that was like from the 80s and 90s, but um, I was able to still find one on Amazon. And I like this tool because it has a very light um, disbursement of air. So you get a really wispy and ethereal look when you use it. It does have two speeds. I usually use the low speed on all of my um, panels. Now, if I'm going to dry it, because I'm a little bit impatient, sometimes I will um, I will use the high speed just to dry it. But again, that's when my ink is pretty much dry and I'm just trying to freeze it, okay? Here I am taking Deco Foil. It's a silver one from Maker Forte and Deco Foil. That's a toner sheet. And I am burnishing that with my hand. You're gonna notice that I removed the paper towel. And that's because I wanted as much pressure as possible. And here you're gonna see that this uh, did transfer and I've got some really cool um, foiling. And what happens is, is where the alcohol um, kind of bunched up, it becomes tacky. And so if you hit that sweet spot before it's completely dry, you get some really, really cool veins and and some metallics in there. Now this is the first panel that we did. I didn't love it. And you saw me. I took a baby wipe and I wiped it off. It looks terrible. Are you scared? I'm scared. But I left it in. I told you I leave everything in. I never stop. I keep going. Now if this was traditional Yupo paper, um, I think that it would, would have wiped off almost white. But on this panel previously, I had used one of the alloys and because I used the alloy I couldn't wipe it all off for some reason that sort of um, grips the paper but I do salvage this so I'm using the exact same two colors the raspberry and the aqua and I start with some blending solution and I here I go with the alloys again I don't know what my obsession is the key to alloys is that you have to have a wet surface or a wet part of the ink and then you can disperse it now using the um, hair tool, I am waving that back and forth and by going working from side to side, you're creating the waves or the veining in the paper because I like some of those soft lines that kind of freeze in place. Um, and again, do what pleases you. You're gonna see that I lost my diagonal design because I wiped my paper. And so I just decided to embrace it and I'm going full on with this one. Um, surprise, surprise. Um, I do use a paper towel. And the reason I do this is if I'm using anything that has heat, the heat kind of gets conducts off the glass or off of a metal piece. And so the bottom part of your paper is getting hot. And so the more heat you have, it warps or bubbles. So by having that paper towel, not only am I saving the cleanup and it absorbs all the extra ink but it's also protecting my panel from warping that's just a little tip and trick i have learned along the way give it a try you may like it i love it because i don't like spending a ton of time cleaning up i'm a little bit of a lazy crafter um i hate the cleanup process and i like things to go fast and again i am using this heated tool i'm sorry the um Conair tool now to dry it and I'm just leaving that entire process in. You see that I'm holding it, the panel down with my finger. Anytime you see me holding the panel down with a finger it's because I've got this thing on full speed and I'm just trying to dry it so we can move on to the next technique. Um, because with that paper towel underneath you're going to have room. The paper's not going to stick to the glass, right? So it is going to blow away on you. Um, and trust me, I had that happen a few times in a card that's coming up. But um, I am loving this panel now. We went from kind of a clean and simple panel from the first time. I wiped it off and made it an absolute nightmare. And then by working these inks, I came up with something beautiful. And I actually love that silver that's at the top. I think it turned out awesome. You're going to have to let me know what you think. Here I'm using um, another piece of small Gemini, Geminio paper. Nothing new. We're doing pretty much the same techniques. The same color inks. 
and later on you're going to see that I use this for my tag. I know Alex has been promoting that we make tags and we take notes, so I am doing this. I am going to make a project out of it. However, on the back of it, I will write my notes as to what I used. So you saw that I put down my colors and I put down a lot. However, I am not blowing this everywhere. I'm leaving a lot of white space. I like that. Um, you saw that I added the 91% alcohol. Did you see those cool cells? I almost should have, in my mind now, watching it you know, on replay, I'm thinking I should have let that dry naturally because those cells would have been so cool. But here is that, that final panel. Now we're coming into some fall palettes. And I am using red pepper and dandelion for these. And I think I bring in some rose gold um, mixatives as well. So here I go. I'm on the diagonal again. And um, I'm mixing the two colors together. And if you want more of a yellow or vibrant orange, you would add more yellow. Or we can play along and see what I get, right? Um, I did not use the air puffer. Again, I just kept with the hair tool. And here I'm blowing this, and I love how ethereal this looks. Um, it becomes kind of... Um, transparent looking and now I bring in the blending solution because I wanted more orange and you're going to see I almost get a resist so every time you do this you're going to get a different um, look so when I put down that blending it kind of pushed the colors out but don't worry I'm coming in with more ink because I I do all the things I just keep going and when you drop one color inside of the other, once you've got that blending solution down, do you see those cells and how they kind of like push out? It reminds me of like pond ripples. And I I love that. I almost wish I had stopped right here, but I don't, I never stop. Um, I brought in some more blending solution. And I think that's because I wanted that to move a little bit further up on the panel. And um, I do ultimately like this this panel when I'm done but I'm having to work it I wish I had stopped maybe 10 seconds ago but here I am creating more cells with that blending solution and do you just love the way this veins and moves and blooms um, I do love it now one thing I'm going to say is when you've got your paper towel down or on anything if you have other colors that you've used like that purple you're seeing there in the corner if you get that wet with alcohol or alcohol blending solution, it's going to wick up into your panel. Um, it wasn't a huge deal for me. I think I was able to push that out with my tool, but that did pick up for just a second or two. So be, you know, just be wary of that. Um, it probably would have been smart to use another paper towel, but I was able to salvage all of these. So here I'm starting to dry the panel and I love how this looks like fire. It just all the autumn goodness. Yeah. Nope. Oh, not drying it, causing more cells. I, I I can't even tell you what my process is other than I love watching alcohol ink. So tell me. Leave me a comment. Do you love watching alcohol inks develop? Because they are, in my opinion, absolutely mesmerizing I fell in love with this when I saw this on a video years ago I didn't just buy one or two I bought the entire collection it was I think it was like a Labor Day sale somewhere and I was able to get like a certain percentage off and I just jumped in I probably have enough alcohol inks to last me two lifetimes which I am so glad that I have because I love these and I should pull them out more often I will tell you that if you're just starting out, just get the rainbow and maybe add a black and add a couple alloys. I always use the gold and I use the um, silver the most. I don't use any of the others. I am starting a second panel now using the same colors because we're sticking with fall. And I started out with the blending solution and I'm putting down a good amount of yellow here. And I have no rhyme or reason with this one. I just slap it down. 
that kind of reminds me of Hall um, Halloween blood before I started blowing it. And I was like, that would have been really cool if I had, you know, something crazy. Now, this is really, really cool. You'll see because I had that paper towel, it's um, it was blowing away. Now I'm holding it and I am drying it because I want a more of a watercolor look on this card. Um, I love the orange that we got here, even though I love the Halloween splatter that we had in the very beginning of the panel. And I, what I do like about this is I like that I left quite a bit of white. You'll see that little um, where I had the uh, purple bleed in and I fixed that by adding 91% alcohol. Now if I wanted to, I could have um, taken a Q-tip with some alcohol on it and I probably could have wiped that all off. But I just went all in and I put down some more and now I'm getting an even more ethereal look. Look at those cells at the top. Isn't that just so cool? Um, and for the most part, that purple does disappear. Um, gosh, I love that top part. Now you're going to see that I tipped some of the ink off. And that was just because I want my panel to dry faster than, than sitting there. Other, you know, sometimes if you get too much ink or too much solution, you could have alcohol inks like take forever to dry, which is not their property. Usually alcohol inks dry like within minutes at the most. But if you get it, you know, too saturated with either solution, it will take some time. Here I go. I keep adding. Do you guys cringe? Because I'm watching it on replay makes me want to cringe a little bit. But like I said, I've gotten some really, really cool cards out of these. So I have no regrets with my process. I think um, I think my goal with this process was to show you how the different solutions affect the panel. So once you get something you like or dislike, you can change it by one dump of alcohol solution or blending solution. That in the center almost looks like a flower. Pretty cool. Um, I think I'm here, sitting here trying to decide what I want to do. And I think I decided to dry this. And you'll see that I get some really cool veining at the end. Um, and I'm very pleased with this. So let me know what you're thinking of the car, of these inks. Let me know what you think of Inktober. Have a lot of your questions been answered between inks and papers and substrates? On the day that I'm filling filming this it's all about ink party that Alex is hosting it was a free event and I think she answered like every question possible we are on day 15 I believe when this goes live so you have another 15 days of information and you can always go back and watch you know the past videos even from a couple years ago I think this is the fourth year that Inktober has gone gone on so there's a lot of information on the Hedgehog Hollow channel so please go back and watch those um, because there's some really amazing stuff. When I first started out I watched Hedgehog Hollow I think sometimes I fell asleep to it because I would watch it for hours on end and Alex is always entertaining and taught me bunches so she was kind of my um, card making superhero. Here I am giving myself a heart attack. So you saw that I had used the um, foil. Now, because I'm an embossing queen, I decided to use some gold embossing powder. And what that did is it stuck to the tacky areas, like where the veining was. And I am leaving the paper towel in place for this technique because I don't want too much heat bouncing up onto the bottom. This paper will bubble. It will crack if you don't keep your gun moving. So you're going to see a, a heat and then a pull away. I then put on a second coat and look at this. Look at this. Isn't this cool? You get the same same look that you get with um, foiling, but now we're doing it with embossing. I love, love, love this. And I am so glad that I gave the embossing a try. I didn't think it was going to work. Now we're getting back to the card making. I have never stamped on this paper. I've only ink blended. So I treated this heavily with an anti-static powder tool. 
I inked up the Angel of Hope with clear embossing glue ink. And now I am coating it with fine detail white embossing powder. And look at that. Nothing stuck that wasn't supposed to. And you're going to see I left this process in the entire process of embossing. You see that I heat it and then I pull it away. And then I heat it and then I pull it away. Because I was starting to get some warping and some bubbling. This will bubble if you leave your heat. In fact, I had some bubble um, and I, the paper actually kind of cracked. I was able to fix that with some ink blending. So be aware that you've got to keep it moving. You've got to pull it away. Um, and as long as you notice that this that the cracking or the bubbling happens in real time, you can fix it. Just don't let it keep going. You know, I mean, you've got to stop the process, pull away, let the paper cool down, and then start. So I did, like I said, I got some cracking um, down towards the bottom of the angel. But I stuck true to my word. I don't stop or throw anything away. I try to find a way to fix it. Because this is embossed, I am able to do an like a, um, emboss resist technique. So once I am done with this, you're going to see down by my thumb, there's a, um, my right hand thumb, there's a crack. So I came in with my blending brushes and I used all of the inks and I was able to kind of push the ink inside those cracks and then I wiped it off of the embossing. I matted that with Eclipse Black ink and then I put it on an A2 side folding card base from Maker Forte. Now I am bringing in one of the alcohol inked backgrounds and that was the one that I used a lot of rubbing alcohol because it's um, lighter. Now what I think is really cool, and I did not know if it was going to work, is you can stamp with Eclipse Black on both sides of this paper. I wasn't sure if it was going to slide off, especially on the side that was um, that was meant for alcohol inks. I did dry that with my Conair heat tool before I did any extra stamping. And then I put this entire thing down on an A2 card base and called it done. This is one that we did the ink swiping with. This is Color Hive inks on the glossy side. And here I am, I'm being brave again, and I am using the Easy Winter Watercolor Scene stamp with Eclipse Black ink. I'm serious. I don't know what, what Alex does to make this stuff work, but it's amazing. I never thought I could use a dye ink on this. I thought for sure I was going to have to use either Stazon or Archival. This is uh, this is the Eclipse Block. Just love it. I am using the Conair hair tool. I am not using a, an embossing gun or a heated tool because I'm making sure that I dry it, but I dry it slow. Then I come back in and I do the sentiment. I'm sorry that my head gets in the way. Um, it is sticking. And so I feel like this is like a one-time stamping. I'm not brave enough to come back in and do it again. So make sure that you get a really good coat on your uh, stamp. Make sure you use your primer so that you've got a great stamp to work with. And look at this. Isn't this cool? I mean, I love it. Now, this is one of my probably newest favorite stamps. I love the word gather. I have it in my dining room. And I think it's perfect for Thanksgiving or fall crafting. Again, this is the alcohol blended um, panel that I used in embossing. And I inked that up with the Eclipse Black ink. I'm using my smushing tool and I am just making sure that my ink transfers. A lot of times we stamp stuff down, we lift the lid right back up. We never give ink enough time to transfer. You've got to do that no matter what substrate, what medium you're using. You've got to give it time to transfer onto your panel. And I did. I stamped right over the embossing powder. So I have more of an artistic look to it or a whimsical look. I'm fine with that. I wanted the grunge. I wanted all the fall goodness. Um, you know, I, I guess I could have used a different stamp if you didn't want to go over the embossing. That didn't bother me. In fact, I kind of like it more 
than anything else that I've done so far. And again, I am using the hair tool to dry it. And then I cut this down um, and put it on an Eclipse Black side folding A2 card base. So if you're making your own base, it would be um, 11 by, I'm sorry, eight and a half by 11 and then you score it at four and a quarter. Man, I can't do my math today. So then I trim down my um, panel to be about three and three quarters by five so that I would have a nice thick black border. And I just love the way this came out. With all that grit and shine, I didn't feel like I needed to embellish that. You could absolutely if you want to. Now this is where my tags are coming in. <clears throat> I am using that one panel that I said I wish that I had left more white. And I'm using the Christmas tag stamp set. And I am using Eclipse Black ink again. I'm not doing, I'm I'm not reinventing the wheel here. We're doing simple stamping because it was all about the alcohol ink and about the paper today. I then bring in the one that says to and from with the snowflakes because I thought it was a perfect background for snow. And I use my Eclipse Black ink and I dry that with the hair tool. Isn't this cool? I love it. And I'm using that one piece of the ink swiping. So this is the Color Hive ink this time on the glossy side. And I'm using the North Pole image from the Christmas tag set. And here we go. Black, the Eclipse Black ink using my smushing tool, my Misty as a one-time stamp. You just pray as you go and hope that you get something awesome and that you don't have to restamp it. And there you go. Now I left this in, um, <clears throat> there's not a die for this that I'm aware of. So what I do is I use my uh, Tim Holtz trimmer, guillotine trimmer, and I just line up the edges of my tag with the guide bar. So that leaves me a little bit of a uh, border. And I do that with both tags. I just leave that in because for the longest time, I couldn't figure out how to do it as a new crafter. I would see people say, oh yeah, I just lined this up with my with my trimmer and I cut it. And I'm like, what? I thought, do I need to know geometry? Do I need to know, do I, you know, all those things. So I'm just leaving that in, in the video for you. If you know how to do it, if you're way smarter than I was, then uh, fast forward. <laughs> I make fun of myself a lot. Um, why not? Because if I don't do it, somebody else will, right? But I am loving the way the tags came out on these. Um, if you wanted to know the truth, um, I was 100% sold on everything Maker Forte when I tried the Eclipse Black Ink. Vegas Strip, like, made my heart pitter-patter. And then when I got to try the Gemma Neo paper back in April, my heart sang. And for a while there, you guys had snatched it all up and it was almost hard to get. And now it's back in the shop. And I was so glad that I got to use this. Um, I don't think there's a better paper to get neater stuff. In fact, I think I, excuse my language, I, I texted my husband when I was making this, this paper is badass. So, and I truly believe that. I will not tell you guys um, that I like something unless I really do. Here I am using the American Sign Language Happy. So the hands in there say happy. You're going to see me make a colossal mistake. I used my uh, tartly awesome rag and it was pretty saturated with water. And I forgot to remove it. This comes in here first in a second. I decide to use the heart stamp. And I get that nice placed right where I want it. I'm all excited about my card. And you guessed it. I close the misty door with that in there. So if you look at that thumb on the right hand side, and you see my head in there, I was mad. Um, I messed up the stamping. Luckily off camera, I was able to dab it up with a microfiber cloth and was able to salvage it. I did go over the images with a uh, Copic multi-liner just to make some of the uh, lines darker 
but that wouldn't be necessary. I am showing you my final versions of my card. On this one, I added some gems. On the crystals, I added some white gel pen. I didn't feel like it needed any type of embellishment. And on the rest of the cards, um, I really didn't show any embellishments either. On the tags, I added some twine. And that's it. So I hope you liked this episode of Inktoberfest. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye, friends.